So I'm, so I'm finally ready to get these pistons back in, uh, in the five cylinder, these lowered compression pistons. There's a thing, few things I wanted to talk about. One of the things was I saw a recent video online. Some guys were de debating oil behind rod bearings and main bearings. The answer is absolutely not. And there's a reason why, and it's because oil, there's a few different forms of lubrication with oil. We've got boundary or barrier lubrication and hydrodynamic lubrication. Boundary lubrication creates a layer. It's a strength of the layer of oil between the two surfaces and it will actually create clearance. Okay, so I've done this experiment with my students before where we put oil behind the bearings, we plastic gauge them, and then we, you know, clean the, all the oil off and plastic gauge them. And there was actually a measurable difference. Um, I'm sure it varies based on the viscosity of the oil, but the point is that you are not supposed to put oil behind shell bearings because it can affect the clearance. That's the bottom line there. The other thing I have is um, these are what's called cracked rod or fractured rod technology. All right, this started out, I believe, in NASCAR, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see you got a rough, very rough surface there. So I know the original ones, they were made from uh, uh, powdered metal. You know, it's kind of like the compacted graphite iron. But anyway, they're powdered metal, compacted, and then they uh, and then they put them in a kiln. And then, you know, once they've done all the machine work, then they fracture the rod into pieces, and they ensure that we've got a very, very precise fit to what the machine, you know, to match the machine work for the connecting rod caps and the rod. So anyhow. The next thing we want to talk about, you know, so we got our bearings in there, there's uh, no oil on the back side. The other thing is the ring openings, okay? My oil control rings, I always put those two oil control rings complete opposite each other, all right? And the other thing is we don't want the rings on the thrust face or completely on the anti-thrust face, so we put them right in between. So. I'll pick you know one of those locations for the top ring, and then the second compression ring, I'll complete it, put completely opposite that. And then the oil control rings opposite those two. So I'll start at the bottom and get all my rings to their anti-thrust locations, or in between thrust and anti-thrust rather. So get all my rings, get all my rings into position, and I always oil like crazy. You can't have too much oil when it comes to assembling engines. Now, of course, on the bearing surface, I want to make sure I have plenty of oil. All right. Also, want to make sure that I get my pistons associated properly. I think we talked about this. In one of the last videos when I was uh, putting the rings on the pistons, all right, so in this particular case, I know I've got them in the uh, right location because I've got some, uh, I got some valve relieves that are machined in there from the factory, okay, and they are over here on this side of the engine. Now, with these small pistons, I've actually chosen a, a motorcycle ring compressor. It's a lot smaller than, you know, the ones you usually get for a car. I, I find it's all that's necessary. We've got such a short skirt piston. I don't think it's really necessary to have a big, massive ring compressor. So, got all my rings into position. Get these rings compressed. Sure, we're near square here. And then if I have my rings compressed properly, I should be able to push this piston in with my thumbs. Just like that. It shouldn't take a lot of force. I see people banging them in with hammers. 
if you get a proper ring compressor <clears throat> and everything's going smooth, you should be able to put that puppy right in there. So that's pretty much how easy it should be. All right. And uh, we'll do one more and then we'll uh, turn this thing up and we'll torque these, uh, we'll torque these rod bearings. All right, so here we go. We've got our rings positioned. Like I said, in between thrust and anti-thrust, we're alternating opening top, opening second, opening oil, opening oil. So we should be good to go there. Plenty of oil. Can't have too much oil. Little oil on the shell bearing. And then again, like I talked about, no oil behind the bearings. It will affect your bearing clearance. Turn it a little, hold it up so I can get my compressor on. I use a motorcycle ring compressor on these short skirt pistons. Works really good. And if you got your ring compressor set up right and everything's in order, all the rings are in their grooves, should go. Shouldn't require any kind of hammering. I've seen people hammering with hammers to push the pistons down. Completely unnecessary. There we go. That's it. So we'll send this baby down. And then we'll turn it over. And we'll put this connecting rod on uh, rod cap on. Fractured rod caps will only go on one way. So with our parting line, that's what we call where the two parts meet. We call that the parting line. Until you get them tight, you'll be able to see it. And as you snug these bolts down, you'll see any oil that's in that parting line will get squeezed out. And you'll definitely be able to tell you got your parting lines correct. And it won't take a lot of torque. I mean, it's just about as little as just snugging them down by hand and you'll see them squeeze any oil out from that parting line. I know we're really not supposed to have oil in there, but it's tough to get it out of there. And we also want to be careful what kind of rags we use. We don't want to get a lot of fibers in our work either. So the torque spec on this is uh, 15 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. All right. So I already got my torque wrench set up. good. Then the next thing I do to ensure I you know just have a reference for my 90 degrees so when I go back and recheck my work I can tell that I already torqued it and did our 90 degrees. I always just put a little center punch dimple toward the front of the engine so I know when I'm done they should all be facing that way. Good. 
All right, that's it. The other thing we always want to be sure to do is every single rod I do, I'll put the piston in, I'll put the rod cap on, I torque it, and then I turn the engine over. All right, engine should be free. Uh, we shouldn't have to force it. I do that for every rod because I put it in, I torque it, I turn it, and if I get to one and something's wrong and it's binding up, I catch it before I go any farther. Um, if I was to put all five of these things in and then torque them all at the same time and then go to turn it and it was locked up, I'd be going through every one to figure out, you know, which one was goofed up. But this puppy is free and it feels Perfect. We are most definitely ready to move forward. Ready for the next step. So we get pistons in, connecting rods are all torqued. I think we're ready to go adjust some valves. So that's the next thing we'll take a look at. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this. This is a good one. I can't wait to get this engine together and get it in this car.